Hello everybody, um, my name is Avery and today I'm going to give you a short little introductory video of just what I'm going to be attempting over the next couple of weeks, possibly a year. Um, I'm going to have some gameplay in the background of Final Fantasy IX. This is going to be of a previous perfect game I attempted with combined stats. And um, I'm just going to be going with some relaxing gameplay as I talk about why I'm doing what I'm doing and possibly how it's going to be done. Um, so I'm going to be attempting a perfect game in Final Fantasy IX, um, which is obtained by pretty much having the most ridiculous playthrough possible um, called The Perfect Game. Now the perfect game was created by a list of people in the Final Fantasy IX community through tons of research over many years. I have a link below. Um, the current guide owner is named Atomos. But what really interested me at the moment is I've already completed a perfect game with base stats and I've already completed a perfect game with combined stats. However, what I'm curious about is to see if it's possible to complete a guy called Monkey Slinger um, he had a Final Fantasy IX run, and what I want to see is if it's possible to complete his run while using Vivi to get the experience for Tantarian and still getting Excalibur 2 with everything else possible in the Excalibur 2 perfect game. Um, so this kind of brings us to the second point that I wanted to discuss, and that's the definition of the perfect game, right? What exactly constitutes a perfect game? Um, I'm going to try and keep this definition as close as I can to the original PS1 version. I am going to be playing on the Steam version, however, and I'll list um, some of the differences and things that will be different in just a bit. But in terms of the perfect game, um, the perfect game includes the perfect amounts of all missable items, the maximum amount of all missable unique items. In this case, I'm going to include 10 promise rings, so I am going to be attempting to do the detour. This includes obtaining all treasures, all missable key items, maxing stats using VV for Tantarian. Now from what I believe, um, the maximum amount of stats is considered when you have the combined highest total. I don't really judge based on the ordered combinations, but I believe the, the max number is more in line with what I would believe is a, a perfect amount. Now, what defines which order is perfect among the combined lists, that I really don't have an answer for. I have my own preference based on some of the um, research I've done using the Final Fantasy IX Battle Mechanics Guide and making just a massive Excel sheet, which I might end up sharing, um, provided this goes really well. Um, <laughs> there's there's a lot of options, about 24 that I've been trying using uh, Letal's Perfect Game Calculator, as well as I've included in that sheet um, the combined approach that Magical Moogles proposed many, many, many years ago. Um, to continue on with the Perfect Game definition, I'm going to be buying all of Stiltskin Steels. I'm going to defeat all Trino Weapon Monsters that are missable through this playthrough. Um, I'm going to defeat all optional bosses, so that includes Tantarian and getting that experience. Um, I'm also going to be doing a couple things to add on. I'll try to obtain the maximum card ranking based on Magical Moogle's ordering. Um, so this is based on the arrows, and you'll see this with the naming of the card that I'm going to try and achieve. I'm also going to try to avoid using summons. Now whether this definition of a perfect game is possible or not, I don't know. And it's very possible that I spend oh, maybe 200, 300 hours plus on an attempt that ends up in failure. And I've considered this possibility, but I think it's worthwhile to see if it's possible. Um, I am going to be playing on the Steam version, and between the Steam version and the PS1 version, there are a couple of differences. Um, and there are some things that I, I consider as cheats, which I won't be using in this guide, but I don't really um, care on how you choose to play your perfect game. Really, it's completely up to you. I'm just going to be trying to keep it as close as I can to the original version. Um, so some of the differences between the Steam version and the PS1 version is the menu movement time is much slower on the Steam version and can glitch. 
on the PS1 version, when you're watching people like Just Incredible, um, Antilles, Monkey Slinger, a couple others, um, the movement time is absolutely insane when it comes to going through the menus, and some of them is like lightning speed. On the Steam version, this is not the case. You can't go as fast as possible, as you might see through some of the little gameplay I have here. Um, and you also you can also glitch if you go too fast. So the way it kind of works is you have to be at a consistent speed, and that's kind of the way it works, as you'll see for the majority of the playthrough. Um, at times, it might seem a little slow, which compared to the PS1 version, it really is, but this costs time as well. It's accounted for. Um, that being said, it's you're not at a complete disadvantage on the Steam version, but on the world map as well, the save Moogle will glitch if you try and save too fast. You also have to hit the button um, at the perfect amount of time or slow enough that it'll read. The PS1 version is very optimized and that is a factor. However, there are also certain battles that are different. So say for example the Black Waltz 2 fight will not work with the strategy that uh, Atomos proposes unless VV gets hit. The final Mystodon fight against Beatrix is much more difficult. Um, I believe you need double or triple Fyras in that fight in order to get through it, but it is possible. Um, and the last thing that's a, v how do you say, it's not very different, but it's really something you have to plan for, especially for people that are not aware of how this works, is the zombies in the Aoife tree will kill Zidane with the setup proposed. Zidane doesn't have enough HP or defense, and he won't be able to gain trance through this. As of the update of 2020, there was an update in 2021 that has small apparent patch fixes. Um, there are no details on this that I could find. However, if you can, definitely link it. I would love to read them. Um, there are also sometimes equipment won't be given when there's a new character. An example is when Amarin comes in the vest he's wearing. If it's not equipped on Zidane or someone else, then you won't get a new one. You'll instead get that one on Amaranth. Um, it's starting to seem a little bit, like I said before, that the Steam version is at a massive disadvantage, but this really isn't the case. The PC version is in HD, so we're talking 1080p, and that's what I'm going to be recording in. My graphics card is, I would say, very powerful, but it's really not needed. For the majority of this game, runs in 30, 20, or even 15 FPS. Uh, still, 1080p is very nice rather than the interlaced version. Um, and there is some differences you'll see when it comes to the sword fight. Um, this is, is very nice to have in P. Um, the reduced battle encounter RNG outside of the world map is a very big factor. What this means is, um, I would say it's about halved. So on longer screens, similar to like the Aoife tree, one of the last ones to enter inside it, um, your chances of encountering a battle, you're going to get them very often. However, when it comes to smaller screens, say for example, um, when you enter Gizmaluk's Grotto, or another one would be, hmm, let me think about this. I don't want to say the Ice Cavern, but I want to say maybe the Desert Palace would be a good example. Where you can just run through a lot of them without getting a battle if you're fast enough. Uh, the path to the Aoife tree as well, before that last one, is very possible to get through the first three without getting any battle, maybe like six, seven times out of ten, which is a very nice advantage. Um, the other thing is when you skip movies, you don't lose time. So if you sit there and compare the difference, especially in the starting movies, because there's a lot of them, um, they use the pause trick on the PS1. The same thing for emulator, um, but on the Steam version, you have the option to skip, and you'll notice when they pause on the PS1 version, they're actually still losing seconds, even though it's paused. Maybe about 5 to 10 seconds. On the Steam version, this is not the case. You, it's instantaneous, you don't lose any time. Um, but again, if you press too fast and you miss, that's going to be a little bit of an issue. Now. As far as the actual run is concerned, I'm not going to have any car bubbles because the original one doesn't have it. This is more a visual preference. 
Um, I'm not going to have any boost, so no speed up, no additional gill, no additional experience. All right, we're not going to have any of that, and we're not going to have no battle encounters either. There's always going to be the chance to have battles. Um, now, I'm not going to be recording the entire thing or streaming it because I don't really feel that that's necessary or think that really many people will be interested. I think this is a very niche population. Um, but I am going to have something called honorable mentions. And this is because a lot of times when you see perfect gameplay, you don't really know or have much of an idea sometimes of how it goes. Or sometimes the little mistakes that obviously you can see when you're watching back your gameplay. Um, but this is going to show some of the close runs that I had. And then sometimes what I had to discard. For example, what was not good enough. Sometimes you'll see mistakes, you'll see mess ups, uh, or sometimes I might even get to the end and because the time simply wasn't what I wanted, I'll have to discard it. Um, as a final note, I want to say that the majority of this game depends on RNG. There is some skill involved, um, but I, I want to say a big majority is RNG and sometimes when you have some movement encounters or little um, trip ups in movement where you get stuck on a wall for example or you hit a person don't um, give up right away because this is really it might just cost you a few seconds in the end which for most gameplay and most perfect games is really not going to make that much of a difference what is going to make a big difference is the battles and starting off with a really slow atb or missing a spell in this case i'm going to use the example of stop um, this makes a really big difference in the um in the rescue of alexandria and in the uh, taking over of calera uh, unfortunately my combined stats game that i had previously um that's where i definitely took up some more time but in this case we're going to try and keep it as tight as possible for people who just want to combine gameplay and don't need to have Vivi absorb the experience or just want the max number of stats and combine, I really recommend you follow Thomas's guide. Um, I think otherwise that about wraps it up. If you have any tips, tricks, hints, anything that could help me out to possibly see if this run is achievable uh, and for me to obtain the max amount of stats, please let me know. Uh, otherwise, I hope you enjoy, and I'll be uploading the first video shortly. Thank you so much, and have a great day.